Hi Milano, this is Eindhoven calling. 15 points for you Milano. 15 points. Now I know that this is not Italian uh, and I hope you understand that I'm referring to the Eurovision Song, song Contest uh, that just took place this weekend. Uh, but actually I'm not kidding. I do have 15 points for you. I'll explain. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to contribute to this uh, edition of the Philosophy Talk series. Um, I cannot be with you uh, there today in the flesh, but uh, I'm happy to be virtually present. My name is David Hamers. I'm a reader uh, in city and countryside uh, at Design Academy Eindhoven. And I wrote a manifesto. Um, a manifesto that addresses what storytelling can mean for designers and if used by designers what storytelling requires and I want I would like to share this manifesto with you so I'm going to read it to you all 15 points here goes one storytelling can be a valuable part of a designer's repertoire Two, storytelling can be very enjoyable. Stories can be entertaining. They can be beautiful. They can make us change perspectives. They can make us understand, which is, I think, different than mere knowing. Stories can move us. Three, this is why storytelling can be a subtle yet very powerful design approach to understanding situations that need attention involving stakeholders that were perhaps previously not involved and exploring possibilities for change. 4. I encourage designers to study and further develop the art of storytelling. 5. However, Storytelling is not only an art. 6. It is not an art in the sense that it is not about autonomy. It's about the opposite. It's about connecting with the world. The other, the unself in Design Academy Eindhoven's current vocabulary. 7. Storytelling is an art, in the sense that it is a craft. It involves mastering techniques, experience, care, paying attention to details, and serving a purpose. Storytelling is not a matter of laag pour laag, but asks for an outgoing, outward-looking, engaging craftsmanship. Again, the unself in Design Academy Eindhoven's current vocabulary. 8. So, telling a story is an art in certain respects, but it's also more than this. It's also an act. 9. This act is not an act of simply describing what is out there or repeating what one has seen or heard. There's no neutral ground, there's no objectivity, no unembodied position. Remem remember that even journalists, in their search of the so-called truth, construct their stories. They are not only masters in constructing their stories, but also in hiding their constructions. Do not be fooled. Pay attention. Ten. Designers, I argue, should construct their stories. Designers should construct their stories very carefully. They should pay particular attention to their story's beauty and engaging qualities. They should, therefore, study what is needed for their stories to make us marvel, to make us wonder, to make us understand, and what is needed for them to move us. Do not hide your story's construction but discuss those that work best. 11. 
Constructing stories means making choices, whether implicitly or explicitly, and I encourage designers to do the latter. Don't be afraid to use your intuition, please do, but also don't hesitate to reflect on the choices you make. 12. There are choices to be made about narrative structures and genres. Please be aware of the specific powers and pitfalls of differing narratives, such as the eyewitness account, the fairy tale, the gothic novel, the argument, the manual, the protocol, the guideline, the advertisement. Choices to be made about assigning the role of the narrator and the roles of main protagonists. Points of view, style, tone of voice, etc. 13. Making choices like these means that the act of storytelling is always an act of intervening, translating, performing, etc. Storytelling in that sense is designing. 14. If storytelling is designing, then stories, like designs, have consequences. Social, economic, spatial, environmental, moral, political consequences. What's in the foreground? What's in the background? Who's in? Who's out? Who benefits? Who bears the costs? Does the designer, as narrator, give certain people a voice? That sounds very empathic. Or does the designer enable people to speak for themselves? which perhaps makes giving voice also sound a little paternalistic. Move with care here. Who's in control? Who decides? For whom? Storytelling can be great fun, but it's not a game. It involves taking responsibility. 15. To conclude, I encourage designers to tell stories. I encourage you to include storytelling in your repertoire. It can be a valuable part of it. I do, however, urge you to choose your stories with great care. Pay attention to beauty, to power issues, to possibilities for change. I, in short, be a designer. So, I hope this is of any use to you. Thanks for allowing me to contribute. Have a great philosophy talk. Bye bye Milano.